any time I have ever walked with hips swaying or shoulders thrust back has only ever been for a character on stage or with humor as the motivation. Why is that? Hi, I'm Katie. I put intense vulnerability out there on the internets because I'm that weird and honest friend that sometimes talks way too much. And I hope my random struggles will bring clarity and encouragement to yours. Discovering acting and being an actor for so many years, I loved the freedom of being able to step into someone else's shoes, move my body in a different way, not be stuck in the awkward skin and bad posture of the person who feels like a perpetual goofy mess kid. I've had these thoughts rushing through my head like all day today about what led me to my feelings about my body. Church influence, TV influence, so many points of view just... Right about the time I was 13 years old, Britney Spears came into the scene. Man, everybody was in love with her. She had so much, she oozed confidence. She was the ideal. On the outside, I said how much I hated her and how much we needed better role models. But on the inside, I was like, I'm never going to be looked at like that. And then, on the other side, was the, the speeches that we got at church and in the ministry I was with, the speeches about how girls need to not dress provocatively because they don't want to cause men to stumble. I remember being ingrained that men are visual and women are emotional and that's just how things are. Always keeping in mind that men can't control themselves. So you're either a bad person or you were a desired person. And I don't know if anyone else knows what this feels like, but for the longest time, I didn't really feel like my body was my person. Like, I was just this floating thoughts and people could see me if I was being crazy, but they couldn't see me and I wasn't really there if I wasn't. I actually made a video about that. I'd love if you would check it out. I'll put it down in the description and up here in the window box thingy if I remember. So what do we relate our lives back to? Our families and what we watch on TV, right? What did you relate to? Which TV shows and which perceptions from your families fed into your viewpoints on gender? I expect amazing conversations in the comments section. No pressure. How I saw women portrayed growing up. I saw TV shows where a girl may have been hot and desirable and they were fall guys were falling over themselves to catch her, but once she opened her mouth, she had an irritating voice or she talked too much and suddenly her value was completely gone. This is pretty much how I used to walk in a swimsuit when I was a kid. I just, it was so ingrained that the body must be a bad and shameful thing because that's all of my experiences up to that point had taught me. Basically that being a woman was a bad thing. Okay, here is a little bit of a rant. I'm a passionate person. There's no getting around that. Sometimes I just wonder what I should share, what I should pull back. Trust me, I edited this. There was more. I saw my mom being teased by family members, knowing that my mom has been catcalled and heckled pretty much her whole life because she developed early. But when even family members did it, I grew up knowing that there were ladies who had to rush home to make their husbands dinner because they weren't big boys to do it anything themselves. And then I heard the word rape. I had no idea what it meant. The talk I heard about it was, what was she wearing? Had she been drinking? Clothes and behaviors are just opening her up to bad things. She should have respected herself enough to not put herself into bad places.
I'm irritated that I was made to feel uncomfortable sometimes when I was breastfeeding my kids. Like my, like my breasts were a bad thing, a shameful thing. I'm so annoyed that I never really heard anything about a man's responsibility to not look. How can so many things be so wrong? How can so many people be forced to feel less than? So, I felt stuck between a world where women are subservient members of society, blamed for men's lust, valued for looks over personality, in a world where I had no interest in pursuing my looks. I wanted to be loved for who I was, but that seemed utterly impossible. Did you ever feel like your body's just wrong? No matter, it's too big, it's too small, it's too uninteresting, it's too whatever. I kind of just want to enjoy my life and be healthy for healthy sake, not for how I look sake. And I'm kind of really okay being a more androgynous person. Like, I had this this feeling like, oh my goodness, if I was born in a different time and in a, in a different vocabulary, world of vocabulary, I might have gotten a kind of dysphoria of not being male or female. Where I would have considered myself trans, I would have considered myself non-binary because if that term had existed, I might have just jumped all in, both feet, if that term had existed at a point in my life when I was so disgusted by how I saw women treated, but didn't want to be a man, didn't feel like a man, but didn't really feel like a woman either. Our bodies, I just, I really want to know. I want to know what about our gender is a social construct and what is legit. Like. You know, girls can like to be pretty, but also like to get their hands dirty. And it doesn't make them any less girly. And men can be strong and athletic, but also want to nurture a child and comfort and care and give emotional support as well as physical support. Like, why are there so many poisonous attitudes out there about gender? It means a lot to me that you've taken the time to watch this video. I've been putting off making it for a really long time because I've just been so confused. I've just been so overwhelmed by all the thoughts in my head about it. But it's not over yet. Uh, I, there's some stuff with Morton where I, I put him on the spot and asked him some deep personal questions without any warning. And there's also a poem, so I hope you'll stay for those things. But I think sometimes when we get these big ideas, there's nothing else to do but just press record. Just go for it. Just see what comes out. Hope I didn't scare anyone away with my intensity. Sometimes my emotions just take me on a roller coaster. And I'm just like, whoa, that was intense. What just happened? Recording. I didn't tell you why I wanted you to pull a chair and go through all the effort of putting all the window shades and things down. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sticking around. I mm -hmm. want to hear what your thoughts are about all the stuff I've been talking about, about how I feel about my body and be feeling not, not that feminine and how you see me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks for putting me on the spot like this. No, but I mean, I love you. And I, I love your body, but, you know, I... or And... I, you know, I know that it's complicated. I mean, I have complicated feelings about my body, too, you know. I'm, I don't, I don't look the way I'd like to look all the time. That's, you know, and, and it's, you know, it is, it is hard. Um, but so, yeah, I just, I, I really support you in figuring out these feelings because it, I think that's important. Like, the, the it's important to find a way to feel comfortable in your own skin. And so I'm really glad that you are working that through and trying to help other people to do the same. You're so wonderful. This is love. He's a good guy.
But yeah, but 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 basically, also the important thing is that I really really like your body. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing it occurs to me to say is that gender dysphoria is real. Whether people want to over spiritualize it or say that it's a all in your head or whatever, it's real, and gender struggles are real, and we have to wrestle through what it means to not feel that our bodies match our minds and there's there's just no pretending that away and if you want to share your story or your struggles either down below in the comment section or you can send me a personal message on instagram yeah i'm i'm i don't i'm not a counselor or anything but i will listen to you and respond when i'm able to hugs and really, really important, I want to say that I know this is some really heavy stuff that I'm talking about, and if you've been hurt, if you've been taken advantage of, especially in the context of somebody who was in a place of spiritual authority over you, who told you that they couldn't help it and it was your fault that they sinned, they are so wrong. They could not be more wrong. And anything that has happened to you against your will was not your fault. You have to know that and believe that and hold that in your heart. It's not your fault. It was never your fault. People do evil things sometimes. And I'm so, so sorry. And, oh, there's hope. There is help out there. There is hope. There are people to talk to. There are things. There are resources. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to keep it a secret. You don't have to protect anyone. You need to do whatever you can to be in a safe situation. You are priceless and you do not deserve to be hurt. And now a poem. Your heart was created to dance in freedom, bubble with peace, rim with praises. The power of life and death is in your tongue to create in your hands the seed idea in your head that lights up those brain waves, the iris that widens with delight, the tears that build in your eyes, the beauty that overwhelms, the gut feeling of protection, the light dawning of total comprehension, the lip tremble of love discovered, your holiness is there, the stamp of you, made in love, made for wholeness, valued and seen, in your image and in your power, we soar in ourselves. Our words are chosen, our love is strengthened, appreciation is heightened, joy has no end, ideas and choices and words and pictures all tumble out. You, the king, are our inspiration. To be led by you is to find me, where there's no room for doubt, only more and more mercy, not just better or trying to be good. Conqueror of darkness, mighty warrior, poet, friend, searching after you, I'm found and understood. Nostrils of death and all that jazz. Big questions. I expect amazing talks in the in the content comment. <laughs>